Welcome to Career TV, proudly brought to you by the South African Civil Aviation Authority. Guys, we've got another jam-packed episode for you that is very exciting. By the time we're done today, you will know exactly what a flight attendant does because contrary to popular belief, everybody just thinks they're there to offer you meals, but there's so much more to the profession. But don't worry, we'll sort that out for you as we go on with the show today. Today, we've got two beautiful ladies in... Um, in studio with us. We've got Alexis Woodworth and we've got Mbalentle Makoma. But hang on, before we speak to these lovely ladies, let me just quickly tell you about the South African Civil Aviation Authority. So they are the regulator of the civil aviation industry in South Africa. They regulate airports, airlines, and they're also responsible for the issuing of aviation crew licenses. So now let's get to these beautiful ladies. Ladies, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. us. Hi, Sandy. Gosh, yeah. Guys, <laughs> you have no idea. I'm catching feelings right now. <laughs> you know, I feel like I'm not dolled up enough. Like, ladies, you look gorgeous. Yeah, Thank you. Do. As yeah. always. Thank so, you. ladies, let's, let's, let's head straight into it. You ladies are flight attendants. What does a flight attendant do? Here check from the front, fast response, keep family in the technical library. I've got a COVID box with a green seal up front, thank you. Our first aid kit on is green, AED is available, for the water is full, we sit in the empty, may I check the emergency light switch? Good afternoon, 3702 Johannesburg. May I thank you please see your boarding pass? Captain, we have 181 passengers, no wheelchairs, no infants. May I close up? Now time to fasten your seatbelts for takeoff. We suggest that you keep them loosely fastened throughout the flight. To fasten your seatbelt, insert the flat metal tip into the buckle until you hear a click. To tighten it, pull on the loose end. Release it by lifting the flap. They are located in the following areas. Two exits in the front, four exits in the middle of the aircraft over the wings, and two exits in the rear. Please take note of the emergency exit nearest to you. Our cabin pressure is carefully controlled. However, an oxygen mask will be released from the panel above your head if it changes during flight. Remain in your seat. Remove your COVID-19 mask and immediately grab an oxygen mask, pulling it firmly towards you. It is the action of pulling the mask towards your face that releases a pin to start the oxygen flow. Place the oxygen mask over your nose and mouth and continue to breathe normally while securing the elastic band around your head. A life jacket is provided under your seat. In the unlikely event of a water landing, remove your jacket from the pouch. Pull the life jacket over your head, wrap the belt around your back and fasten in the front. The life jacket must not be inflated inside the aircraft as this may hinder your ability to lead through an exit. Inflate the life jacket once outside the aircraft by pulling down on the red toggles. Should it be necessary, the jacket can be inflated manually by blowing into the red inflation tubes. A light will illuminate when the battery is submerged in water. Special life jackets will be provided for infants by the cabin crew.
Okay, so we are safety officers, firstly, before everything. We, yes, we do serve passengers food. We do um, look after the passengers in flight. However, we are safety officers. We are trained professionals to evacuate an aircraft if we need to land, if there's an emergency landing or a landing on water. We are trained to evacuate the aircraft. So basically, we are safety officers. Like I said, we help with each and everything else. Okay. All right. And before we get into the, the technical aspects mm -hmm. of your profession, let's get personal. <laughs> I want to get to know you ladies um, a bit more personally. But Lendla, where did the passion start for you? So with me, the passion, I was basically born into aviation. So my mother was a flight attendant for about 27 years with SAA. So when I was, I'm 24, so you can just imagine that. <laughs> That's basically all my life. Mm. So I used to basically see the life of a flight attendant all my life. And I got to see the ins and outs of a flight attendant. I got to travel with her as well. So I just basically fell in love with it. But I, I still had the whole stigma that, you know, you just beautiful Charlie Dollies and you just serve food because that's what I saw. And until I did my initial training myself and I just realized that this is a different ball game. So, yeah. Actually, now that you mentioned that you were born into it, then I'm assuming you must be from a big city. Where are you from? I'm from, I actually grew up in Daviton. So since my mom was traveling all the time, I stayed with my grandmother in Daviton, the okay. township in the East Strand. Okay. Yes, and then later on, I moved to Kempton Park. Mm -hmm. um, I stayed with my mom then, and then I moved to boarding school for mm -hmm. the rest of the year. Okay, wonderful. Alexis, I want to get to know you a bit better as well. So take me through your upbringing and where the passion started for you as well. Who's Alexis? Alexis is from Ennerdale, South Africa, south of Johannesburg, Johannesburg. <laughs> Out there. <laughs> uh, yes, so mm -hmm. I basically was at a high school. In matric, I was doing geography and travel and tourism because who wouldn't want to travel the world or see new places, meet new people? I then had the opportunity to meet cabin crew members and the flight deck from SAA. They came to our school and they basically told us what they do and that's when I really fell in love with it. And to me it was like a passion because not everybody can get into this industry. However, it is a beautiful industry to work for. Definitely. Yes, once you've got jet fuel in the veins. <laughs> Listen, it's incurable. I agree. It I is. know. <laughs> Um, Balen, so let's bring it back to you. She just mentioned something I love there um, about them being told what they do, what flight attendants do. Let's talk about a typical day in the life of a flight attendant from the time you arrive at work until you knock off. Just briefly, let's paint the picture. What does that day look like? All right, from sign on, we have to do a safety briefing, whereas sign on is you sign arriving. on, you arriving at work, okay. you signing on, physically sign. Oh, okay. That <laughs> I am reporting. I've arrived, I've reported for duty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And then we have to undergo a safety briefing, whereas the in charge flight attendant will brief the rest of the crew member on the basically procedures that you need to follow, the normal procedures for the day. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to do. Just to, you know, remind you of the emergency procedures as yeah. well, that you obviously don't forget that, okay, in an event of an emergency, this is what we need to do. This is our plan of action. And then the flight deck will also brief the crew on the flight plan, basically. They will tell you the flight times. They will tell you... Um, weather conditions. Yes, weather yes. conditions. Yeah. You need to basically, expect turbulence or whatever yeah. it is. Yes. The breakdown for the day or mm. the day of flying, where your sectors are moving to, where you're going. You Sectors. are flying, yes, you are flying from Johannesburg to Durban, from mm. Durban to George, from George back to so Durban. You yeah, call those definitely sectors. sectors. <laughs> Paying attention. Yes. Mm. <laughs> okay. Not just the flight. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, wonderful. Um, and I love that you guys are actually talking about the safety briefings and things like that because the, the misconception is that all you guys do is serve food. No. 
and that, that's far from it. And I think you guys are about to learn why, because I want us to quickly now look at the educational aspects, because no one that's responsible for just serving food is expected to get the type of results and marks that they have to get <laughs> during their training. But we're going to go into that now. So let's, let's talk about first high school. What are the subjects that maybe one would need to take in order to pursue this career? Okay, so basically your English, mm. a level English, five level English, five, yes. mm -hmm. um, matric, you need to uh, pass in matric, definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, I took, like I said to you earlier, geography and travel and tourism, mm -hmm. and that's basically how I got into my initial training. Okay, it's yeah. not a requirement, it's, it's not just a requirement. Here. But it helps, it. yes, oh, okay. it helps in the industry, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then when it comes to your cabin crew training, mm -hmm. your pass rate for your courses mm -hmm. in cabin crew is 90%. Yeah. So you need to have 90% to in pass everything. in everything. That's even higher than what we are required to get <laughs> as pilots. We're, we're just working usually for 75% or more. That's 90. You don't wow. need just 90 to serve food. <laughs> that, that, yeah, no, that's steep. That's really steep. But I also want to then know what type of course is this? Does it have a particular name if one is interested in pursuing it? And where would one go? in order to pursue this type of course, in order to become cabin crew? Okay, so theory. it's your initial training or your initial license, but it is called ab initio. Okay. And you can do it at an aviation training organization, which is Cranfield or EPT, which is in Boxburg and in Randburg. Okay. So you have schools. I know that Cape Town has Durban and Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically that's where you do your training. And typically, what is the duration of the course? How long is it? Six weeks. Six weeks. Definitely. I love that um, we're learning so much about this because I, I myself didn't know all this and you think I should know, but I don't. <laughs> and one, I, I don't know if this is a myth or a fact, but I heard that you actually have to know how to swim as well. Is it true? Is it a requirement? Yes, yes. it is a requirement that prior to your course, mm -hmm. you need to know how to swim. So they're not going to teach you how to swim. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it, it is an, a requirement prior to doing your course. Okay, so if one is interested and doesn't know you how to swim, swim, then maybe need to one get take up yeah, swimming <laughs> lessons. They'd be an advantage. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, another thing that I wanted, since we are speaking about requirements, are there any additional requirements that one would need? to qualify as a cabin crew or qualify for the training, can be grooming. Like, for example, as pilots, we have to have medical certificates. We have to undergo medical examinations. Do you guys require the same type of certification and stuff like that? Yes, before you start at an airline, you need, a medically, you need to be medically fit okay. to um, fly for the airline type of thing. So you're gonna have to get your medical prior to as well so okay. you can't start there and then get a medical you need to have a medical you need to be medically fit you can't have any um you can't have any speech impairments or impairments mm -hmm. or hearing like with us pilots you can't be colorblind color color yes. yes i wanted to give the same example yeah oh, that's okay. the most common one yeah Definitely. yes mm -hmm. so guys you have to Paying attention on those <laughs> things because yeah, they could potentially hinder um, your career. Yes, anything else? Also, add? I just wanted to add, you can't have any visible tattoos, okay. visible piercings, piercings your, mm. your gold teeth. Yes, that's not yeah. allowed mm -hmm. at all because it you need to set a sta standard yes. for the face aviation of the yes. company. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So <laughs> that explains why they always look so good. So now you get it, guys. Now you understand why and I don't look this beautiful. Uniform regulations. <laughs> yes. is it? regulations. regulations. Your nails exactly. needs to be a certain color. Mm -hmm. Can't be overly red or black certain or length white. As well. Certain mm. length for the nails. Yes. yes. Wow. You know, now it really makes sense. <laughs> That's why, that's why I've never seen a flight attendant that doesn't look well put together. It's really, it's all coming together. Guys, I hope you're following with me. Okay, let's, let's moving right along. I'm sure as with any industry, it comes with its fair share of pros and cons. Yeah. So what have been the challenges for you guys, if any? I mean, with every day you do face different challenges. I feel like every day has its own challenge. Mm -hmm. Some days you have your unruly passengers where someone is boarding and they drunk and unruly. Yes, they are drunk and unruly. Mm. And you have to decide on the spot, am I taking this passenger or am I leaving them behind? Mm -hmm. So you have to make that call by, you need to assess that person, are they able to follow simple instructions? If 
it happens that we have an emergency, will they follow instructions? Yes. And if not, and they're unruly, and they're fighting everyone, then we have to get them off. But yeah. some people, very calm, very happy, very jolly, eventually in the flight, they just fall asleep, and they calm. So that's where you need to make like certain decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I feel like every day just has its own challenge. Yes. Mm. And what are the challenges for you, Alexis? If well, any? I've experienced a lot with regards to aviation. Firstly, medicals. Mm -hmm. Medicals are when you have to get somebody that is gasping for air, get mm -hmm. them onto oxygen, Basically speak to the flight, and get them to land mm. at the next airport or the closest one mm. before getting off. Yeah. So basically with me personally, I've experienced a lot of medicals mm -hmm. and there are certain security and safety checks you do even before the flight starts. So even before we start our day, mm -hmm. yes, I do give a safety briefing. However, when I get on that aircraft, I do security and equipment checks. I mm -hmm. check expiry dates of our equipment, equipment. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And for us to have that medical on the flight, we have to have our oxygen operating pro properly. Okay. So we get passengers, well, crew babies, whoever needs oxygen onto oxygen it's it's like i said well like mbali has also mentioned mm. it's no two there's no day that's the same in yes. aviation ever no two flights are the same i ever. love that as well definitely it just it makes it more interesting honestly okay and and i love that you mentioned that you guys are like nurses and doctors on board basically yeah. Yeah. So it really does go beyond just the serving of food guys yes. i hope you're really paying attention to that and now in a Look at the positive side of life. It's, it's not all about the lows. What are the highs? What Traveling. do you love most about it? Traveling. <laughs> Traveling. Why am I not surprised? New places. Traveling. Mm -hmm. New faces. Yeah. <laughs> the <post>. Different <laughs> cultures, definitely <laughs> religions. Mm. Yes. It's, it's, it's an very interesting. beautiful mm. industry to work for. It I can is. imagine. Yes. I can imagine. And with that being said, actually, the scenarios that you guys spoke about um, previously, the unruly passengers. Mm -hmm. I'm sure one has to stay calm because I always see you guys always grace, poised. graceful, mm. smile, poised. Mm. Is, is a certain personality a requirement or is it advantageous to have a certain, certain personality traits in order to do well at this profession? Yes, I feel as a person you need to have a certain level of respect for others you yes. need to be a people's person firstly because that is exactly what the job states we are still mm. customer care yes. Yes. That we, we the are there for yes. the customer yes. however when you have to be assertive mm -hmm. that needs to now you can't make jokes anymore we need to give you instructions especially on the flight especially if you're under an unruly passengers Mbali mentioned it earlier mm. that you need to speak to a passenger in a sense of you need to be courteous yes. as a person as well. I feel in life you need to be courteous. However, when you give instructions, it needs to be militaristic, yes. concise. It needs to be short and we need to do, like, when it comes to safety. Yes. However, in... And it, just, sorry, sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm just, I, was just, I just wanted to add that it does come naturally mm -hmm. as well. Like, as you get experienced, mm -hmm. it does come naturally. You get to learn how to deal with certain... Yes passengers certain personalities with us as crew as well we have different personalities mm -hmm. exactly. so my personality is not going to be the same as hers she's probably more talkative than i am and i'm more reserved or yeah. whatever so you get to learn with more experience you get to learn how to deal with different personalities yeah. different passengers yeah okay um i love that clarity and and just when you were speaking there i i i, I was thinking of the traits i'm thinking isn't it important for one to be, have the ability to stay calm as well yeah. in stressful yeah. situations because yes. your job can get quite stressful. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you yeah, guys are aware of the storm. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, for example, if one has storm. to land in water, ditching. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I think, can you briefly just elaborate on that? What's your role if we have to ditch an aircraft or land an aircraft in water? That's what we mean by ditching. What would be your role? 
so in that scenario in a ditching scenario i need to make sure that everyone has their life jackets first of all mm -hmm. i we brief in the a long cabin yes, preparation we brief we have a but in short, ditch, yes, short preparation, preparation. Well. Mm -hmm. also in the safety the demonstration mm -hmm. yes we do tell you where your life is so located, you how, to put it on. how to put it on and all of that we need to tell you and that's where it's important to listen to the demonstration because you need to know that you can't inflate your life vest in the aircraft you need to inflate it just at the door mm. as you go out otherwise if there's water that comes in you're going to be stuck in the, the aircraft, aircraft yes. exactly so our role is basically to evacuate everyone make sure everyone is out safe we need to Leave. basically leave lost. lost yes so i must save yes, your life. save your life my your life is in my hands right now i must make sure everyone is out everyone is safe gosh that's a lot yes. of responsibility hence you guys are safety officers yes. i hope it's coming together i'm i'm really piecing the pieces of the puzzle together and another thing then if because it's it's a lot more intensive mm -hmm. um and serious compared to what the general public thinks then if that's the case where did the passion begin like knowing everything i know now i would think it would put me off from the 90 percent percentages to responsible being responsible for people people's lives evacuating lost how do you maintain that passion what keeps it interesting for you beyond the normal traveling what is it i feel you need to start your day off like oh, you set the tone words, for the yeah. day. Yes. You have your briefings with your cabin crew members and then your briefings with your captain. So basically you set the tone for the day. You can't um, be negative, mm. firstly, because negativity breeds negativity. Yes. That's how I feel. So on a flight, my day starts off energetic and it ends off energetic. No wonder you guys, I'm That's always the wondering passion. what you guys are. <laughs> ah? Wow. <laughs> my bad. And this is like, oh, that? You guys are always so happy. Mm. <laughs> you know? Not really. Yeah. You always look, <laughs> we look happy. <laughs> you can walk into an aircraft feeling so depressed, and the first thing you I see feel. is a this beautiful yes. smile just being flashed in your direction. Like, I wonder how they do it. Yes. Is the pay that good? Just yeah. kidding. <laughs> introduce people to aviation yeah no. so when people come on board you need to feel Make you know them, a yeah. certain i feel your first flight needs to be your last exactly. flight your energy must be maintained the, yes. throughout the day mm -hmm. so that's how we feel about oh, wow. our job wonderful passionate no. whilst fighting <laughs> saving <laughs> yes people, saving yeah. lives. oh okay wonderful yeah. ah guys you know time has just flown so much i feel like there's so much more i can still ask you yeah. but because of time i just Quickly, for the learner at home, whoever's watching, do you have any words of encouragement? Why should they become a flight attendant? You know, any words of encouragement? I feel most people struggle with um, their parents or any other person telling them that, no, don't be a flight attendant because of obviously the stigma. Yes. And if it's your passion, follow your passion. And mm. also don't do it for the money because... It's a passion. If you're doing it for the money, you're going to be unhappy. You're going to, it's going to be unpleasant. It's going to be an unpleasant journey for you. So your journey is your journey. And follow that. Your dream is valid. Wow. That's powerful. Alexis? Always remember that this is not a job. It's a lifestyle and for the love of flying. Oh, wow. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. I was not even going to try. Um, guys, um, that's, that brings us basically to the end of our episode today. I hope you've learned as much as I have. This has really been an, an enlightening experience for me. I did not know half the things we ladies spoke about today. So thank you so much for joining us. Guys, I, I can, I'm sure you can see how insightful this is. So stay tuned. You know, like, subscribe, because that's how you're able to be posted, um, to stay posted in terms of what we communicating to you guys and the information we bring you. So on that note, if you have any additional questions, do write them on the comments section. So until next time, guys, we out.